Welcome to The Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott. Today we're dedicating an episode to the secret power of rhythm. More and more as I learn the secrets of reality creation in this ongoing course of using the imagination, one of the key principles and laws is the principle of rhythm. According to the Kabbalion, the fifth hermetic principle goes as follows. Everything has its ups and downs. Everything flows in and out. The swing of the pendulum is manifested in all things in this cosmos. The swing to one side is equal to the swing to the other side. Rhythms compensate each other. The word rhythm is rooted in the Greek word ruthmos, which means symmetrical measured movement or flow. Rhythm is the variation of the accentuation and length of a series of events or vibrations. So what does the fifth principle in Hermeticism really mean? What does rhythm really mean as a principle in reality creation? It carries a great secret to help us understand the world and our place in it and how to influence the reality that we're in. It says some deep things about reality. It says that reality works on an algorithm, a predefined set of rules and processes to be followed in your life's calculations. If you check out my previous episodes on the fact that we are in a simulation, this would tend to confirm that. And if you accept the idea that we are in a simulation, then you would accept that reality works on an algorithm. And this algorithm can be found through rhythm. The rhythm tends to swing between the two poles as defined in the principle of polarity. So it swings from happy to sad, from light to darkness, from right to left, from success to failure, etc. There is recurring change, activity and motion in rhythm. Universes are created through the outpouring of the all mind. These created universes reach the lowest point of their materiality and then begin their journey inward to be absorbed back into the all mind through the in drawing. Similarly, stars and suns are powered into existence and after reaching the peak of their powers, they begin the journey of regression and slowly and surely become dead matter until they are empowered with new energy where a new cycle begins. Rhythm perpetuates the concept of time and history repeats itself. Everything goes and comes back in rhythm. Rhythm permits change and transitions. It shows the existence of two opposites. The rhythm of sound is the most apparent in human life. Another classic example of a natural rhythm is the circadian rhythm, which is the daily cycle of all living beings, behavioral, biochemical, and physiological processes, including plants, animals, fungi, and bacteria and human beings. You can see rhythm in the following aspects of the cosmos, within atoms as they vibrate rhythmically, within the movement of heavenly bodies like planets and natural satellites, within the moon's waxes and wanes, with the alternating seasons, within philosophies and creeds, within the cycle of night and day, within the changing tides, within breathing. The above illustrations are not exhaustive in any way. Everything in existence is always in a dance. Everything in this world and the entire universe has rhythm. And this is the principle of rhythm, the secret of rhythm. This rhythm can be in any form, including but not limited to an action and a reaction, an advance and a retreat, a rising and ebbing or sinking. This law of rhythm is seen everywhere and in everything. It can be seen in the creation and destruction of the worlds, in life and death, in the rise and fall of civilizations and nations, and even in human beings' mental state. There is no concept of absolute rest or total cessation from movement. The principle of rhythm is universal and can be applied 
to any question or phenomenon in any plane of existence. The universal pendulum is in eternal motion and the tides of life flow in and out. Rhythm is also seen in the mind, which is one of the most important practical applications of this principle in our daily lives. Learning and mastering the dynamics of rhythm can help ease some of its severe negative impacts. If you learn to stay in the flow of the rhythm, your life can be smooth. Many have acknowledged and learned and mastered this principle and have found ways and means to overcome the negative effects of this mental and emotional rhythm. By understanding rhythm, masters in imagination have learned to use it effectively in their lives instead of being used by it. In the mental phenomena, the ancient hermetics realized there were two planes of consciousness, the higher and the lower. This understanding helped the wise masters of the past to rise to the higher consciousness, which in turn helped them to escape the swing of the pendulum in its return trip in the lower plane. The masters called this the law of neutralization. They raised their ego above their mental activities vibration so that the negative swing was not manifested in their consciousness. This approach is analogous to rising above something so that it can pass beneath you without affecting you. Using the mental law of neutralization, a master or an advanced student would polarize themselves to the point on the polarity scale at which they want to rest. They neutralize the rhythmic effect by raising their vibration to a higher plane when the pendulum swing takes the individual to the other pole in equal measure. The process was similar to deliberately not participating in the negative swing of the pendulum. Nearly all individuals who have learned the art of self-mastery would achieve this by not allowing the negative mental states and negative moods to affect them. A master, on the other hand, would do it consciously, unfailingly, and with a much higher degree of proficiency every time the negative swing threatened to ruffle their feathers. The master uses their will to attain a high level of mental firmness and poise seen as extraordinary in the average human being's eyes. The principle of polarity is connected to the principle of rhythm. Because the polarity demonstrates that rhythm exists between the two opposite poles, mental alchemy essentially uses a combination of the principles of rhythm and polarity for countering and polarizing effect. Most people can relate to the importance of the law of neutralization, thanks to their diminished ability to manage wildly swinging moods feelings and thoughts that threaten and often succeed to make their lives chaotic and intolerably difficult. Stop for a moment and recall how often a period of enthusiasm and joy was dampened by the power of an opposite feeling and mood. You can think of the number of times when a moment of courage was shot down by fear and uncertainty. Tides of feelings rise and fall in most people, so imagine if you had the power to hold the courage while being unaffected by the fear or to hold the enthusiasm and joy while being able to escape from the negative effects of depressing moods and feelings. This is exactly what the law of neutralization will help you with. The law of patterns is vital for human beings as they learn and understand the world around them by studying their environments, patterns. In fact, studying and understanding patterns has been a key survival technique for hunter-gatherer ancestors who lived at the mercy of nature. Any good or bad habit or pattern tends to reassert itself over time unless you do something different and break the pattern. If you enjoy doing something and you get positive feedback from your brain, you reinforce the pattern or habit in your mind. If you want to get rid of old inhibiting or bad patterns, you can use the power of spontaneous action by using new ways to do old things. This approach restructures and alters your thoughts, behaviors, and the way you live your life. If you understand your internal patterns, it will help you to see the dysfunctional habits that you have. Changing the way you do things allow you to break these habits and restructure them, setting the course for an improved way of living. It's not difficult to harness the power and significance of rhythm in your 
life. By harnessing the rhythm of life and all things in and around it, you can be conscious creator of your life path. Every time your rhythm is broken, learn to rise above it and set up a new rhythm to discover the unknown inside you. It is not easy to do this and will be fraught with difficulties. You have to learn to make a habit of discovering the unknown within you so that you can move ahead in the evolutionary process. Your ego resonates at a very low vibrational level. When you rise above your ego's vibration, you choose not to participate in the pendulum swing to the negative pole. This way you become the creator and navigator of your destiny and life path. You get back the control of your free will to build self-awareness and recognize self-limiting and inhibiting patterns and habits. Once you identify these patterns, you can create conscious changes in your physical world whose effects will reflect your mental and spiritual world. The law of compensation states that the intensity of a swing in one direction decides the intensity of the swing in the opposite direction. You can see this law clearly in the physical plane and the swinging of a pendulum of a clock. The pendulum swings to one side and then swings equally to the other side. A pendulum with a short swing to the left will always have a short swing to the right. An object thrown upward to a certain height will fall back to the same height on its return journey. The same thing can be said for seasons, tides, and all phenomena of rhythm. The physical manifestation of this law is obvious in all the scenarios explained above. However, the ancient hermetics took this law a step further and said that a human being's mental vibrations are also subject to the law of compensation. This means that an individual who has a lot of happiness also has a lot of sadness. Someone who does not feel pain too much can also not feel happy to the same extent. All feelings and emotions are compensated for. This may be the reason that Ra teaches the balancing exercise. As you go to sleep at night, you take your experiences through the day and you bring up the opposite. I used to question this, but in understanding the law of rhythm, I could see the wisdom behind this balancing exercise. The same goes for animals. Many animals enjoy keenly, but their nervous system and temperament are designed so that they suffer high degrees of pain. Some people have low degree temperaments wherein both their joys and pains are experienced at low intensities. Some people have high degree temperaments, which means they could be ecstatic when the occasion arises and can be downright depressed on the other extreme. The rule for this is that every individual's capacity for pleasure and pain is balanced the law of compensation in action. There's another interesting hermetic corollary for this law of compensation concerning experiencing pain and pleasure. A swing to a higher degree of pleasure does mean a swing to the same degree of pain. However, the negative aspect comes first. According to the masters, if you feel a high degree of pleasure, it does not mean you have to be prepared for an equal degree of pain or be ready to pay for it. On the contrary, the pleasure swing is preceded by the correspondingly equal pain swing either in this current or previous life. However, a master can supersede and escape the swing of pain by using the law of neutralization. The master raises themselves to the higher plane, thus escaping much of the effects of the pain swing felt in the lower plane. The law of compensation plays a very vital part in human life. You will notice that everyone pays the price for what they have or do not have. So if you have something you lack another, your friend or colleague might have something you lack, but lack something you have. That is why everything in the cosmos is balanced. No one can really eat their cake and have it too. Everything has its good or pleasant and bad or unpleasant sides. What you gain is paid for by what you lose. And this is true for everyone and everything in the world and universe. The wealthy might have the riches that the poor lack. However, the poor could have something that the wealthy cannot buy with all their money. For example, a rich man might be able to buy the best foods and eat in the most luxurious dining places, but he might lack the appetite for the food 
or could have severe digestive problems, and envies the poor man who enjoys a simple plain dish with relish and has a healthy digestive system. This kind of balance works in all aspects of life, and the law of compensation can be seen operating everywhere, balancing and counterbalancing, and always succeeding in bringing the pendulum swing to the other side, even if the time taken is longer than usual, sometimes more than one birth. Now, I've used the word pendulum several times, and don't confuse it with the pendulums we speak about in reality trans surfing, although they are a consideration in this. The key element is the movement of the pendulum and the way that it balances. Now, how do we apply this to the principle of reality? Before we do that, it might make sense to answer the question, why is there rhythm in the cosmos? Many masters believe that life's regular rhythm is essential to grow and develop and rise to the higher planes of consciousness as you imbibe and embrace the expressions as you move from one side to another, from one feeling to another, from one experience to another. Clearly, there are cosmic rhythms in play with life, as discussed in the Law of One. A certain number of years we live this life, a certain number of years we move as a soul through different densities. Repeated rhythms and repeated experience in life are essential for you to know as all the possible outcomes of the various complex algorithms are part of the infinite being of which everything in this cosmos is a part. Cycles, repetition, and rhythms are essential for learning and experience. When one nation rises and falls, you learn something from this cycle. You implement some of the lessons learned in the next nation. And as it rises and falls, you learn new lessons that could be very or slightly different from the lessons from the rise and fall of the earlier nation or civilization. And each time a rise and fall happens, your learning gets better. The great masters go further and say that even the infinite being learns from individual experiences thanks to the rhythmic repetitiveness of everything in the cosmos. The cosmos and all its elements have laws to stick to. For example, tides flow out and in, and this flow has to repeat. So you cannot find a tide that flows out and in, vanishes and then comes back randomly, flows in and out for a while and vanishes again. This is not what happens. The tides simply stick to the rules and flow out and repeat rhythmically. So now how can you apply this principle in your daily life? One way is by releasing resistance. Now that you know that all things occur rhythmically and a fall is followed or preceded by a rise, happiness by sadness, ecstasy by depression and so forth, it would be futile to resist the rhythmic occurrences in our life. When you choose to work from a place of acceptance instead of from a place of resistance, or continuously saying no to things happening to you, you can work better with your reality to manifest your desires better. Resistance is a negative emotion and works against the alignment of your personality. Acceptance is a positive emotion and can be used to manifest your desires and goals better. The next step to using the principle of rhythm effectively is to become aware of your internal mental, emotional, and physical rhythms and the external rhythms that impact you, your experiences and your life. When you build awareness about these rhythms in your life, you can use the power of rhythms instead of being used by them. You get to be in control when you know and can expect what will happen next in any particular rhythm. Here's an example to demonstrate the effectiveness of being aware of the rhythms in your body. Suppose you've noticed that you feel more lethargic than usual on particular days in a month. And on another set of days, you feel energetic. Once you know this rhythmic pattern in your life, you can preempt those days and choose to use the energetic days to do physical work while using the less energetic days to do a light reading or something that does not need too much energy. Taking this approach means you are not resisting the rhythms. Instead, you and your awareness and acceptance empower you 
to harness the energy in the rhythmic patterns to get optimal outcomes for yourself. And this way, you can amend your life to align it with the natural rhythms and cycles. To reiterate, it would be futile and unproductive if you choose to resist and fight against the rhythms of the cosmos. Instead, it makes more sense to accept and embrace the rhythms and use them effectively in your life and attract happiness and joy for yourself and your loved ones. Rhythms are good because they allow you to preempt things and events, thereby giving you the time to brace yourself for the troughs or prepare to optimally harness the crests of the rhythmic waves in your life. In this, you can take lessons from a drummer. In music, the rests are as important as the notes you play. In fact, if you go to a concert and pay attention to the drums, you'll notice the drummer actually not play more than he or she does play. The times in which the drum isn't being hit, the cadence of off is the thing that makes the music more like music and less like noise. Life is the same way. There's a definite beat to creation that works well for us when we embrace it. Again, the created order is built on a rhythm of off and on, and we're designed for bursts of work and pauses for rests. Part of living a life of balance means there are definite times of rest and Sabbath and those moments of complete off. It's okay to do nothing. That's part of the rhythm of life. Now, clearly there is a rhythm to thought vibrations and different thought vibrations have different rhythms. On the mental plane, when you think, you emit thought waves and each thought wave has its signature frequency and rhythm, albeit invisible to your physical senses. The overall frequency of your mental nature is determined by what you persistently think, feel, and imagine and believe. But there is a rhythm to these thoughts, which in turn determines the corresponding nature of your projected three-dimensional experience. Since you can consciously choose your thoughts, you can intentionally increase the rhythm of your mental frequency by thinking more positive thoughts of a higher frequency. If you follow music, then you know how different vibrations interact, how different rhythms interact. We know that in accordance with the law of vibration, higher rates of vibration have directive power over lower rates of vibration. This means the higher your degree of consciousness towards your higher self, the greater your directive power over the denser degrees of consciousness below it, including your mental plane and the three-dimensional physical plane. This explains why the higher you go in your consciousness on the inside, the greater your ability to effortlessly manifest your desires on the outside. Everything flows out and in. All things rise and fall. The measure of the swing to the right is the measure of the swing to the left. It's all there. Just think about the waves of the ocean and the rise and fall of empires and business cycles and the swing of your thoughts from being positive to negative and your personal success and failures. In accordance with this principle, the secret principle of rhythm, when anything reaches a point of culmination, then the backward swing begins almost unnoticeably until such time that any forward movement has been almost totally reversed. Then the forward movement begins again and the process is repeated. To work with rather than against the swing, the rhythm, you must become aware of the subtle start of the backward movement in any endeavor, whether it be to improve your health, finances, relationships, or any goal you may set in motion. When you feel the law start to draw you back, do not become fearful or discouraged. Instead, remember that you are one with the all-powerful absolute for which nothing is impossible. Keep your thoughts focused on your desired outcome and remain positive no matter how far back this law of rhythm pulls you. Even if your effort meets with failure, find comfort that by virtue of this same law, things are going to go back up again. If you're struggling, rejoice because that means that things are going to go back up again. You can rise above the law of rhythm in your inner world and hence also in your outer world by avoiding the extremes so that the pendulum has nothing to correct. This does not mean to strive for mediocrity and nor does it mean to not care for anything or anyone. Rather, it means to seek balance because balance is in fact what this law seeks. 
We see this in the episode on importance. When you are attempting to imagine a reality that you want and you place a lot of importance on it, there's always a corresponding swing of the pendulum and the momentum flows back against it. You're always dealing with rhythmic energies in your creation of reality, always. So you must remember this and keep balanced with your emotions at the same time bringing up the reality that you want. It is like a game. When, for instance, you experience mental extremes on both sides of the spectrum, then you might be fearful or panic, overexcited, or have a sense of obsession or attachment. You must seek to calm your mind so that your thoughts, emotions, words, and actions that follow are not extreme. In this way, the swing to the one side will be measured that the swing to the other side will be unnoticeable. Extremes are relative, and what is extreme for one person may be measured for another and vice versa. You can only gauge if what you're thinking, feeling, or doing is extreme, and the criterion according to Pythagoras is whether it's hurting or harming you, your present or future self. But you must continue to remind yourself that rhythm constructs, regulates, and maintains life on earth. It surrounds us, it runs through us, it emanates from us, and is at the origin, the very core of what it is to be human on the earth. You can focus on the rhythm of your heartbeat right now, a steady two beat rhythm, and the inhale and exhale of our breath. Each rhythm is fundamental, obvious, reassuring, and a matter of life or death. Our heart beats, our breath operates in ever-changing complexity of rhythms that are in direct response to our surroundings, activities, interactions, and emotions. Our collective breath are what fill the Earth's atmosphere. Our heartbeats perpetuating our collective actions make the rhythm of human life on this planet. We continually connect and respond to daily rhythms, which interestingly enough, the basic human clock is not 24 hours. It's closer to one lunar day, which is 24 hours and 50 minutes. From the Latin circa around, planetary rhythm determines the amount of light we are exposed to, which in turn sets our body rhythms, which in turn influences our sleep and mental awareness and pain sensitivity and temperature and hormone levels, such as our pineal gland, melatonin, secretion, and cell, protein, and molecular activity and repair. But our heartbeat, breath, and circadian rhythm are only a small part of the symphony, a complex interaction of rhythms, biological, geographical, physical, and atmospheric. We're all part of the Earth, which is part of a rhythmic movement extending, relating to planets, stars, and galaxies. The Earth's two main rhythms are rotation and revolution. Rotation is the Earth turning on its axis like a top, and revolution is the Earth's orbit around the Sun. The Earth rotates west to east on its axis once a solar day. This rhythm produces a set of physical consequences, such as the daily rhythm of light and heat, the motion of tides and human activity on the Earth. Geographical and political measurement, the poles, equator, and parallels of latitude and meridians of longitude are extrapolated from the rotational rhythm of the Earth. Our moon travels affect the ebb and flow of the Earth's oceans. Our planet is obviously one large rhythmically interlinked feedback mechanism in which human activity contributes with our emotions and physiology a part of the dance, setting the pace of development and the rhythm of being on the Earth. Everything affects everything else. Life cycles, biorhythms, sleeping habits, weeks, months, years, and seasons define, maintain, and contribute to our complex rhythm reality. Civilizations are defined by their ability to measure and control the Earth's rhythms. Human measurement ultimately is an abstracting of the Earth's rhythms. Scientists have identified the Earth's rhythmic pulse as 7.83 Hertz. This rhythmic electromagnetic standing wave circles the Earth between the Earth's surface and the ionosphere. These rhythmic waves are known as Schumann's resonance, and may be what some scientists believe the rhythmic brain substratum common to all living beings. The frequencies of 
Schumann's resonance are intimately linked with those of brain waves. Any adjustment in the patterns and frequency of this earth resonance would affect homeostasis, the ability of a cell to maintain its equilibrium, REM sleep, and healing. For a decade, researcher Robert Beck documented the brainwave activity of healers from all cultures and religious backgrounds. Psychics, shamans, Christian faith healers, Santeria, Wicca parishioners, and others who, independent of their belief systems, exhibited nearly identical EEG wave signatures during their healing moments. The brain wave signatures were at 7.8 to 8 hertz, identical to that of the Earth's rhythmic pulse brain wave activity. The rhythmic pulses last from one to several seconds and were phase and frequency synchronized with the Earth's geomagnetic pulsations, the Schumann resonance. Abnormalities in the resonance have been determined to induce some form of anomalous cognition such as auditory and visual hallucination or even seizures. One of the objectives of meditation is to quiet the mind as a method of allowing the mind to become aligned with this resonance. When there have been sudden decreases in the rhythm of the resonance, there appears to be an enhancement of processes that facilitate telepathy and clairvoyance. But the Schumann resonance is not the only earth rhythm. Within the generalized Schumann resonance exist local rhythmic variations, meaning various parts of the earth give off different rhythms. Accumulated, they create a generalized Schumann resonance. The earth has a rhythm, and which is comprised of slight variances of each local rhythm. The Schumann resonance and brain waves alike fluctuate due to geographical location, lightning, solar flares, and daily planetary rotations and cycles and radiating coherent waveforms derived from the environment, stimulating and propagating in turn a rhythmical wave pattern or signature of the earth specific to a local environment. We all live in a complex matrix of oscillating fields and the tiniest fluctuation in one interlocked field can carry over into others. Many times per second, rhythmic pulses travel completely around the world. This alpha rhythm frequency is also found in humans. So we, meaning our brains, are phase locked in some way with the body, earth, and its atmosphere. The expression phase locked means that everything in this merry electrical dance is in step and moves at the same frequency, sending coordination signals to all organisms. These signals couple us to the global electrostatic field and to one another. Check out my shaman meditation, where I use drums to induce trance states. The reason for this is that rhythm becomes a part of our ability to enter into altered states and affects the way our brain works. You'll find this documented by a researcher, Brian Hayden, who researched the ways that African rhythm, dance, and music affect the rational mind and our environment. He stated, the rational mind thrives on stimulation and the analysis of incoming information of changes in the state of environment, assessing possible dangers, opportunities, transgressions, and compliances. Without sufficient incoming information, the rational mind tends to shut down or go dormant and lets other parts of the brain assert themselves, such as when we dream. Monotonous and repetitious stimuli have the same effect. The rational brain perceived no interest in endlessly repeating unchanging phrases or mantras, sounds, chants, rhythms, or images. It lets everything go on automatic pilot and checks out in a more energy-saving dormant stage. These are the reasons why relaxation, monotonous repetition, drumming, or a constant beat, sensory deprivation, meditation, and prayer are effective doors to ecstatic or altered states. When you look out at history and your life, you see there are patterns that you can follow that are rhythms in reality. I mean, Shakespeare said, there is a tide in the affairs of men, which taken at the flood leads on to fortune. Or King Solomon, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. So you are either a victim of fate or a master of your destiny. And there are no two ways about it and no neutral position. So what can you take from this? At a minimum, I want to inspire you to evaluate this in your life. 
and remember that all life and all existence within the universe has its expression in cycles, the periodicity of which is the equivalent to the rhythm of certain measured and harmonious recurrences of stresses or impulses of a cosmic nature. Are we free agents or are we controlled by these rhythms? I believe that having an awareness of these rhythms allows us to use them to our advantage because sometimes they actually come to our benefit or to overcome them by an awareness of their nature. Every man, woman, and child can take advantage of natural laws and work in harmony with them and each may become a master of their fate and through harmonious cooperation with the cycles of life reap the riches rewards offered by the bountiful disposition of the cosmic plan you are free and you have the privilege and power to choose in all of your acts and all of your thinking you still have to consider the nature and the source of the impulses that you receive the urges and inspirations that come before you and which call for a choice or choosing these things have rhythm so the most important book that i would recommend that you read and i will perhaps read from it someday but it's not something that really fits into reading for a podcast and that is self-mastery and fate with the cycles of life by h spencer lewis this mind-blowing book captures the rhythm and fate of life in many many different ways and discusses them in all natures so i highly recommend that you evaluate and check out and read every part of this book because it will help you to understand the rhythm of your life and how it's affecting the rhythm of your reality it evaluates the cosmic cycles of life the periods of earthly cycles and then it evaluates simple periods of human life there's obvious periods that you can evaluate for instance we know from birth to the seventh year that's our babyhood that's when the fundamentals of our education and cultural development are laid the seventh to fourteenth year when certain physical changes take place in our development and the mental side of our nature takes a secondary place in the changes going on it is just before the fulfillment of the second period that the important physical changes in both the male and female occur we know there is something that happens from the 14th to the 21st year the 21st to the 28th year and this book really breaks down the cycles and the, what occurs in these different periods of life it helps you to understand what to expect it helps you to overcome them or the understand the limitations to them there are cycles of business the things that occur in the first 52 days of a business and the things that occur two years into a business these cycles can be evaluated and have been written about there's a daily cycle that breaks down what to do in a 24-hour day cycle in the morning and at night what is your cycle like what are your rhythms like what are you like in the morning at noon and at night evaluate your cycle above it all there is a soul cycle and the soul is going through its own rhythms and cycles but if you walk away from this episode with anything it's simply an awareness that the rhythm can't be stopped or changed and you must utilize an understanding of it in creating the reality that you want there will be a natural rhythm when you imagine something from the point of inception to the point of manifestation there'll be a natural rhythm to every aspect of it and understanding these rhythms and cycles by looking at what has occurred in the past by evaluating books like the self mastery and the fate with cycles of life by h spencer lewis you will understand what to expect when to be patient when to be in a hurry when to utilize these cycles to help enhance your own manifestations in that respect please put in the comments the way that you have utilized your understanding of the rhythm of life and the world and how you use this to your benefit do you wake up earlier in the morning are you more energetic in the morning are you more energetic at night how do you utilize your understanding of the rhythm of life to your benefit do you do greater work in the spring do you do greater work in the summer every aspect of it is important 
And once you understand it, then you know the secret power of rhythm behind all things. You can find all episodes of The Reality Revolution at therealityrevolution.com. And welcome to The Reality Revolution.